Bonjour. Good morning. My name is André Roy. I have the pleasure to be the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Science at Concordia University. I'm delighted to welcome our future graduates, their families and friends, our distinguished guests for the Spring 2016 Convocation Ceremony. Je vous souhaite la bienvenue en ce jour mémorable de Collation des Grades. Convocation is a very, very special day in the academic year, but it's an even more special day for graduates. In our it highlights achievements in their students' lives. Today, our students and their supporters will celebrate the reward for their efforts. Graduates, enjoy this moment. It's yours. Diplomé, c'est votre moment, c'est votre temps. Félicitations à tous nos diplômés. Congratulations to our 2016 graduating class. Now, would you please join Ms. Colleen Bartley, mezzo-soprano, in the singing of O Canada. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to seek, and a time to lose. We gather here today as a community of scholars in order to celebrate and to give thanks. We come together in this colorful and historic rite of passage to mark and to honor the changes and transformations in our lives. We stand in this place and at this time with hearts full of potential and hope. This is the day when all possibilities are transformed into something greater. Chacun et chacune de vous a travaillé fort pour être ici aujourd'hui. Vos cœurs sont remplis de joie, mais aussi sans doute d'une certaine tristesse. Vous voulez remercier tous ceux et celles qui ont parcouru ce chemin avec vous en dépit des difficultés, du long et dur travail, des incertitudes et des craintes. Finalement, la victoire. Finalement, le succès. Finalement, une autre étape importante qui vient d'être franchie. Pour tout cela, vous voulez dire merci, car nous savons que rien de ce que nous accomplissons n'est un geste solitaire. Our time of celebration marks and hails your personal success, just as it reminds us of the greater sense of belonging to this university, your alma mater. Our coming together transcends our individual selves. We stand as a community of learning, a collective witnessing to the compelling beauty of human knowledge and its limitless potential. It was the great Chinese philosopher Confucius who reminded us that 
they must often change who would be constant in happiness or wisdom. Our fondest hope is that the wisdom of these years has taught you to be at home in a world of incessant and necessary transformation. Que cette journée en soit une de jubilation tournée vers des lendemains remplis de promesses. Que cette cérémonie, ce passage obligatoire, marque pour chacune et chacun d'entre vous non, point, un, non pas un point culminant, mais le début de tous vos rêves. Et que notre gratitude collective soit belle, grande et merveilleuse. Concordia Salus. Would everyone please be seated? Veuillez vous asseoir, s'il vous plaît. What a beautiful day. Dear graduates, invité distingué, mesdames et messieurs, Félicitations à chacun et chacune de nos nouveaux diplômés en cette magnifique journée de réjouissance. Graduation is a special day for your support networks, your families, loved ones, and friends, as well as the Concordia community and your fellow alumni who have collectively collaborated with you to make this day possible. I am thrilled and honored to share this special milestone with you. Le valeur d'une formation universitaire est incontestable. Et en obtenant votre diplôme, vous avez acquis un grand avantage dans notre société. Mais il y a autre chose. The lessons gleaned from textbooks and professors were just the beginning. Your challenge now is how to acquire knowledge on your own using the education and, and skills you developed here at Concordia. We stop growing when we stop learning, and therefore the road to success is truly always under construction. Take it from me, I'm a 65-year-old work in progress. Success is not determined by financial wealth or even the approval of our peers but rather success is defined by the extent to which we are able to build our communities and help our fellow citizens. There's a famous maxim that says, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. Our backgrounds and circumstances may have influenced who we are, but we are all responsible for who we become. You must continue to be open with outstretched arms and open hands to be willing to receive but also to give. Define success by the degree to which you positively affect people in your lives. En tant que citoyen averti et engagé, vous, les diplômés, êtes bien placés pour exercer une influence extrêmement bénéfique sur notre monde en évolution constante. Progress and change now lie squarely in your hands. As Buckminster Fuller said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. There is no shortage of opportunity to get involved. There is no methodology that cannot be improved and no science, engineering, art or business that cannot be enhanced by the energy and enthusiasm and skills you all possess. To thrive rather than merely survive, you will have to be adaptable and resilient. You will have to be leaders of change, not followers. Do not be afraid to lead, not only by example, but by also exerting a positive influence on those around you. Remember that if you elevate others, you elevate yourself. I know that for many of you, this is a period that can be unsettling, given the uncertainty that may be ahead. You are transitioning from an environment where everyone told you what you should do to an environment where you now have to decide for yourself what you want to do. Wherever you go and whatever you do, the harvest of knowledge 
experience and values that you have learned and absorbed at Concordia will be as relevant for society as you make it. Be bold, be imaginative, be prepared to fail, to continue to learn and to succeed. Trust me, you can and will make a difference if you follow your passions. When you discover your passion, you will find your life to be an absolute joy. Je vous encourage à rêver, à explorer les choses qui n'existent pas encore, puisque c'est ainsi que vous allez changer le monde et bâtir l'avenir. I am happy that we share a meaningful connection through Concordia, and I hope that today is the beginning of your new lifelong bond with our university and your community. I wish you all good luck, good health, and good fortune. Chapeau et merci. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. To our graduates, congratulations. A university degree is a major achievement. And in our 21st century knowledge society, it's a vital one. So much the better if your degree comes from a school with a strong reputation like ours. Université urbaine et engagée, Concordia puise ses forces dans le sens même de ses établissements fondateurs. Loyola College, qui suivant la philosophie jésuite, privilégiait le service de la, à la collectivité. Et Sir George Williams, qui favorisait l'accès à l'éducation. That solid foundation helped the Concordia of today prepare you for a world that admires your can-do attitude, your entrepreneurial energy, and your ambition to make the world a better place. Concordia is now a part of your DNA, Tout comme vous, notre université, nouvelle génération, poursuit son évolution. Nous avons lancé l'an dernier une nouvelle vision stratégique. Inspirée par nos fortes traditions, elle nous indique comment transformer tant le milieu universitaire que la société dans son ensemble. Some of our nine strategic directions are to experiment boldly, to get your hands dirty in research and applied learning, to mix it up across traditional disciplinary lines, and our most popular direction, to take pride. When I'm out and about talking to our alumni, the respect, the gratitude, the pride they have in this institution, and the doors they were able to open with Concordia's help, those are the recurring themes. You know best the value of the education you've received here. I hope you'll tell others. Stay in touch with each other. Stay in touch with us. Bon chance, félicitations, merci. Mr. Chancellor, it is my honor to present to you Dr. Joan Wallach Scott, <clears throat> Professor Emerita at the Institute for Advanced Study and one of the world's most prominent historians of modern gender history. Dr. Scott has written or edited 18 significant books and over 80 articles treating France's social and gender history, citizenship, and academic freedom. Les ouvrages de Madame Scott ont inspiré des générations d'historiens, de philosophes, de politicologues, et des spécialistes de la question du genre. Ces érudits exploraient des thématiques des plus variées, comme la politique étrangère américaine au XXe siècle, le colonialisme en Amérique latine ou encore la confection des terres en Europe de l'Est. Le lectorat de Madame Scott est international. En effet, ses livres sont traduits dans de nombreuses langues notamment en français, en portugais, en espagnol, en chinois, en japonais, et en arabe. Dr. Scott's intellectual depth is reflected in her unusual achievement of having obtained canonical status 
while remaining intellectually subversive. First, the canonical. Over the years, Dr. Scott's research has garnered her various prestigious awards. Here are just a few of them. In 1974, she received the Herbert Baxter Adams Prize from the American Historical Association, the AHA, for the Glassworkers of Carmaux. In 1989, her landmark collection of essays, Gender and the Politics of History, won the AHA's Joan Kelly Prize for Women's History and Feminist Theory. In 2006, the Middle East Studies Association presented her with the Academic Freedom Award, and in 2009, the AHA honored her with an award for scholarly distinction for her lifetime achievements. Between 1987, when the academic database JSTOR began putting articles online, and 2008, readers accessed Dr. Scott's article, Gender, a Useful Category of Historical Analysis, more than 38,000 times. As of April this year, it remains the most frequently cited article in the history of the American Historical Review. And let me translate this to say, for a historian, this makes her a rock star. Now for the equally impressive subversive elements of her achievements. Dr. Scott has long made it her business to chart hierarchies of domination, whether by gender, race, class, nationality, or sexuality. Dans un récent ouvrage intitulé The Politics of the Veil, en français la politique du voile, Madame Scott analyse l'interdiction de porter des signes ostentatoires à connotation religieuse dans les écoles publiques de France. Elle montre comment, au nom de l'universalité, l'État français marginalise les demandes des féministes et des membres de minorités sexuelles ou raciales. She has also been an important defender of academic freedom in her service to the American Association of University Professors. Most recently, she published a pointed indictment of restrictions on critical speech on university campuses in the wake of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign's 2014 revocation of its offer of employment to Dr. Stephen Salida. As these examples illustrate, no other writer has had such a profound influence on shaping our understanding of how gender and power construct one another on university campuses and far beyond them including in such domains as war and diplomacy, which prior to Dr. Scott's publications were often considered ungendered. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate and the Board of Governors, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Dr. Joan Scott so that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Letters honoris causa. I would like to ask Dr. Scott to deliver her convocation address. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Chairman of the Board of Governors, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class, especially the graduating class, family and friends. <clears throat> I'm deeply moved and honored to be honored by Concordia University and to have been asked to say these few words. 
I have to say, when I heard that I was a rock star, I sort of got nervous about what I'm going to say. I don't think this qualifies as rock star material. But I do want to talk to you about history. Historians are notoriously bad at prediction, and not only because we study the past. Our study of history has taught us to notice contingency, the unexpected events that undo patterns and throw things out of kilter. In my own work as a historian, I've learned not to expect linear development or coherent paths to some known future. That is the stuff of fantasy, what we wish would be the case. To achieve that wish, we impose coherence. We organize things in an inevitable, logical fashion in order to convince ourselves that that's the way things have to happen, the way we ought to lead our lives. But linear progress has never been the case, whatever our teachers, parents, and others tell us. History is a series of chaotic encounters, daily occurrences, cataclysmic events that are made sense of only retrospectively and then because we impose meaning on them. It's not that there's no such thing as change, of course there is, but how and why it happens is always a puzzle that cannot be known in advance. I could give you lots of examples of what I mean by, uh, uh, what I mean by this from the things I study, the French Revolution, the history of feminism, the uses of the term secularism to justify discrimination against Muslims, the politics of immigration in Western Europe, but I won't do that today. You've had enough history lessons of that kind during your years here at Concordia, at least I hope that you have. Instead, I want to talk about how this kind of thinking about history's nonlinear paths applies not only to kings and queens, wars and revolutions, but also to our own lives. If I look at my life, it's the things I didn't anticipate that mattered the most. I went to college not expecting to go to graduate school, but in the early 1960s when I graduated, there was a big push to recruit people, especially women, to become college professors. I liked the work, so I went to graduate school. When I got to the University of Wisconsin, I had no idea what kind of history I wanted to study. But the head of the department, who interviewed all incoming students and assigned them to a seminar, decided for me. He was notorious, I later learned, for thinking that women didn't belong in graduate school, that they'd spoil the fraternal atmosphere among the men in his seminar. His field was American history. So after asking me what languages I had, he assigned me to a French history seminar. I've never regretted becoming a historian of France, but I didn't plan to become one. Later, as the only woman in a history department, I became a historian of women in response to the pressure of feminist students' demands for women's history, her story, they called it, and the department chair's assumption that because I was a woman, I was naturally suited to do that job. And so it's gone. In all of this, I was forced to think not only differently, but critically about why the things I've been taught, about the box that I was, I was in, why that didn't work any longer, and now and in the new situations that I've faced. It's how I became, I think, a critical thinker by being forced to face situations I hadn't anticipated I would have to face. I can now write a narrative about how one step led inevitably to another, but that wasn't how it worked. And it probably won't for you either. Even more than was the case in my generation, careers today are improvisations, balancing the need to make money with a desire to find jobs that fulfill some passion or deep interest, something you really want to do. And you might not even know what that is until you stumble upon it. Take my son, who quit graduate school because his love of literature was being professionalized in a way he found at odds with that love. I have to admit that as his mother, I was deeply upset with his decision. I have fact, I was furious. But despite my knowledge that history isn't about linear evolution and my own experience of a nonlinear path, I somehow thought he should follow a straight and narrow one. He didn't, and after a number of part-time and insecure jobs reviewing books and editing a journal, he was recruited to be a film critic, a job he never prepared for and wouldn't have predicted he'd end up in but one he learned to do, now loves, and does really well. A late acquired passion in his case. The point is that the future is open and unpredictable, and that ought to be a welcome rather than a terrifying thought. You don't follow a road to some fixed end 
to, to some fixed endpoint right away, if ever. And in fact, the proven paths don't always take you where you want or need to go. There's another aspect to all of this, which has to do with our relationship to the world and to politics. Here again, things are never as inevitable as they seem, and our ability to influence and even change them has to rest on some deeply felt set of principles about right and wrong, about what is and what ought to be. Outcomes may not be predictable in advance, but that doesn't prevent our acting. As I understand Concordia students, you've taken the lead in revising and reforming the curriculum. You've been open to interdisciplinary experiments. Some of your professors might resist. And you've pushed for ways to remedy discrimination and a lack of attention to matters of race at all levels of the university. You've not been afraid to think critically outside the box and to find ways to press for change. I think we're in a moment when that experience will continue to serve you well after graduation. The world is a mess right now, and older generations are at a loss to figure out how to fix it. The old solutions aren't working. We need people open to inventing new ones, willing to depart from fixed paths and to risk those not yet tried. You are those people. For our personal lives and our politics, I'll leave you with a poem from Robert Frost that always inspires me. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Good luck to you all. Congratulations, and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Scott, our newest rock star, for your inspiring address and for your comments about critical thinking and not accepting that the future is open and unpredictable. That really is that what we all have, and it applies to all of us, not just our students here. It's important in life. So we thank you. Um, I would like to call upon Vice President Research and Graduate Studies and Interim Provo and Vice President Academic Dr. Graham Carr for the conferring of the degrees. <clears throat> Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate, I present to you the candidates for the doctoral and doctorate degrees, for the master and magisteriate degrees, and for the graduate diplomas and certificates in the Faculty of Arts and Science. I certify that these candidates have fulfilled the requirements for these degrees, diplomas, and certificates. Monsieur le Chancelier, au nom du Sénat, je vous présente les candidats au doctorat et à la maîtrise, ainsi qu'au diplôme et au certificat de deuxième cycle de la Faculté des Arts et des Sciences. J'atteste qu'ils satisfont aux exigences de ces grades, diplômes et certificats. Will the doctoral and doctorate, master and magisteriate, diploma and certificate candidates please stand?
By the powers granted in the University Charter, I admit each of you to the appropriate degree, diploma, or certificate as approved by Senate and certified by the Inter in Provo. En vertu de l'autorité que me confère le charte de l'Université et fort de l'approbation du Sénat et de l'attestation de vice rectorat exécutif aux affaires académiques, je vous décerne les grades, diplômes ou certificats que vous postulez. Please be seated. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate, I present to you the candidates for the Bachelor and Baccalaureate degrees in the Faculty of Arts and Science. I certify that these candidates have fulfilled the requirements for these degrees. Monsieur le Chancelier, au nom du Sénat, je vous présente les candidats au Baccalauréat de la Faculté des Arts et des Sciences. J'atteste qu'ils satisfont aux exigences de ce grade. Will the Bachelor and Baccalaureate candidates please stand? By the powers granted in the University Charter, I admit each of you to the appropriate degree as approved by Senate and certified by the Interim Provo. En vertu de l'autorité que me confère la Charte de l'Université et for de l'approbation du Sénat et de l'attestation de vice-rectorat exécutif aux affaires académiques, je vous décerne les grades que vous postulez. Please be seated. While our graduates prepare to cross the stage, I invite you to enjoy the music of the Encore Brass Quintet. I'm pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Doctor of Doctorate in Philosophy from the following programs. Humanities, Humanities, Arts and Science, 
individualized program humanities, individualized program pure science, political science, social and cultural analysis. Deborah Lunny. Natalia Grincheva. Martha Elias Downey. Amanda Rossi. Cheryl McDonald. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate in Science from the following program, Exercise Science. Rashmi Awasthi. Sabrina Cesare. Nikita Shikoin. Sora Pawanta. Vanessa Salucci. Marilyn Youssef. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate in Arts from the following programs, Hispanic Studies, History, History and Philosophy of Religion, Individualized Program, Classics, Languages, Linguistics, Judaic Studies, Literature Francophone et Résonance Médiatique, Philosophy. Paolo Cellis. <laughs> Vilma Vidal Garcia. Marco D'Amico. <laughs> Catherine Amel. Eva Marie Cratoville, winner of the Edward Eastman McCullough MA History Award, awarded annually, when merited, to a graduating MA student in history in consideration of a research essay judged to be of exceptional merit. Samuel Le Duc Frenette. Amanda Ann Whitaker. Michael Williams. Eleni Sarudis. Kalina Spooner. Malik Garcy. <laughs> Emily Lamaru. <laughs> Daniel Attack. <laughs> Ed
Edward Taylor. <laughs> Melissa Tradell. <laughs> Maria Allahan. I'm, I'm pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate in Arts from the following programs, Public Policy and Public Administration, Social and Cultural Anthropology, Sociology, Theological Studies, Traductology. Stephanie Far Faraji. Nicole Guerra. Maria Caitlin, Maria Caitlin Kelly. Marisa Knappen. Charbel Nassif. Helen Vlahandreas. Mary Gideon Harvin. Mary Gideon Harvin. Just make sure to read one up on the yes, there was an error. Andrew Henry. Andrew Henry. Don Palmarella. Jean-Marc Bergicourt. Valérie Charret. Christina Flores. Christina Flores. <laughs> Nathalie Le Belair. Lucy Marcelin. Katie Moore. I'm pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the graduate diploma in the following programs. Community Economic Development, Traduction. Linton Garner. Wayne Radford. Amal Abdul Noor. Camille Benoit. I am pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Arts from the following departments, Classics, Modern Languages and Linguistics, Études Françaises. Miriam Pabdali with distinction. Sefi Elini Awisi Aikens. George Amanatizis Sade with distinction. <laughs> Michelle Jeanette Berajano Burgos. Brent Calvalash. <laughs> 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 
Hugo Chevary with distinction. Jennifer Chimpin Carrillo. Rafaela Alegre with distinction. Brendan Divitori. Kaylee Eccles. Lori Evans with great distinction. Elizabeth Familiar de Silva with great distinction. Nicole Bernier Fukuda. Daria Galashova with distinction. Elizabeth Gattaro. Adriana Gentile with distinction. Giselle Reyes. Connie Guzzi with distinction. Beatrice Elena Jimenez. Alex Jones. Joanna Louise Josephat. Simon Campa Parazelli. Nicholas McKenzie with distinction, winner of the Classic Book Prize awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in classics. Julia Maestri Lawrence. Carolina Masalika. Anastasia Mudilos with distinction. Ernesto Ochoa. Mikita Patel. Tiziana Principe with distinction. Mariana Ridenti. Sydney Rose. Sydney Rose. Rian Skerritt. <laughs> Jessica Walker. Jana Marie Zampito with distinction. Gida Algenas. Daniel, 
Daniel Aristizabel. Maha Benesa. Danielle Bernal. Annie Bouchard-Tarien with distinction. Pamela Joy Shami. Jennifer Doucette with distinction. Annie Ferland. Tyler Graham. Lea Amelin Couture. Vanessa Catra. Yang Sun Kim with distinction. Ming Jong Kim. Ming Jong Kim. Alicia Rossi. Alex Ladoux with distinction. Jeanne Le Tarte. Jeanne Le Tarte. Santina, Santina Lombardi with distinction. Gerardo Lucar. Terry McFadden with distinction. Emmanuel Metivier. Vanya Maladeonova. Judith Morin with distinction. Keiko Hokawa Fernandez. Marie Natasha Papillon. Brian Perez. Marc André Plante. <laughs> Alexandra Pro Marin. <laughs> Joseph Dennis Purcell. Maria Rodriguez Diaz. Peter Sather. Brittany Silvera with distinction. Jill Sinclair with great distinction, winner of the Prix Paul Hollander pour les études françaises awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in French studies.
Penelope Susanna with distinction. Boa So. Coulter Woodson. I am pre pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Science from the following department, Exercise Science. Alisa Analytis. Claudia Antonacci with distinction. Christina Archibald. Samantha Bennett. Zion Jeremy Bernal with distinction. Nicholas Borelli with distinction. Joseph Cheshire. Daniel Shemus with distinction. Caitlin Serino. Caitlin Serino with distinction. Angela D'Ambroso with distinction. Andrea D'Ambroso, sorry. Andrea Ann Doduc with great distinction, winner of the Exercise Science Plate awarded to the most outstanding graduated student in exercise science. Shogofa Faiz Mohammed with distinction. Carl Falardeau with distinction. Philippe Ajmoussa with distinction. Samantha Halfard with distinction. Mark Israel with distinction. Mackenzie Laframboise with great distinction. <laughs> Laurence Lafreniere with distinction. <laughs> Alexandra Lyon. <laughs> Envy Le Quang. Julia McGill Watros with distinction. <laughs> Marc Nadeau with distinction. <laughs> Ong Pug Nguyen. <laughs> Andrew Audi with distinction. Francis Peters. Sarah Pichet with great distinction. Christina Pizzino, Christina Pizzino with distinction. Tanya Rebuli with distinction. Dana Ray Regrides Yada.
Carla Reyes with distinction. Lakshini Selatambi with distinction. Corey Wiener. Stephanie Wiseman with distinction. Mark Bobby Wong. Raymond Yu. I am pleased to introduce you to the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Arts from the following department, History. Bradley Adams. Kathleen Michelle Bata. David Battison with distinction. Jose Andreas Jr. Brito. Cassandra Carrier. Yannick Cherubin. <laughs> Jessica Clark. <laughs> Jessica Citrin with distinction. Jeremy Dohan. Jeremy Dohan. Edouard Dufresne. <laughs> Lindsay Fraser Noel. <laughs> Nicholas Goyens. <laughs> Verinder Graywall. Anna Iliakis. <laughs> Tynan Jarrett. <laughs> Megan Landrigan Buttle. <laughs> Melina Longchamp. Athena Luguez. Julia Mara. Stephen McIsaac. <laughs> Melissa Anna Menard with distinction. Anna Messina with distinction. <laughs> Alexandre Miller with distinction. <laughs> Martin Charles Mueller Judson. Martin Charles Mueller Judson. <laughs> Taylor Erdel. Dragon Pukar. Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed with great distinction. Mm -hmm. 
Damien Rivera. Christian Daniel Ruiz. Christian Daniel Ruiz. Roberto Scalia. Donna Lee Schofield. Adam Skura. Emma Seconder. Valerie Sirwa. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Arts from the following departments, Philosophy, Political Science. Rutvi Ajmera with distinction. Michael Giesbecht with great distinction, winner of the W.R. Fraser Medal for Philosophy, awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in philosophy. Erica Gu with distinction. Natasha Marvento. Brett Molson. John Nenniger. Matthew Polinchuk with distinction. Kayla Paris. Emma Parsley. Alexandra Pennell. Victoria Nicola Sabo. Osner Tombul. Sean Zambush. Ellis James Agile Diamond with distinction. Jenna Albanese with distinction. Sukena Amani. Kofi Arhin. Raymond Arsenault. Sarah Azuz with distinction. Sydney Claire Baran. Lara Betamuni. Cassandra Belanger. Narjis Bendidan. Camille Baudet. Thomas Baudin. Georgina Bones Cotterell. Mm -hmm. 
Maria Margarita Quesedo with distinction. Samantha Cambridge. Alexis Carrillo. Debbie Carrillo Escamilla. Igor Chekhov. Amanda Coletta. Samia Constantin. Mark Andrew Continel Pasari. Mark Cordai, with distinction. Iona Kosmovici, with distinction. Nicole Cummings. Ari Kevork Daglian. Harie Bustayenoglu. Etienne Dublois with distinction. Jacques de Genestel with distinction. Patrick de Greuter. Prisca de Thomason. Jonah Donnelly Sosnovich. Casey Dolson. Casey Dolson. Jordan Duclos. Suzanne Dupar. Samantha Elfasi with distinction. Rogan Feltman. Rogan Feltmate. Elodie Fida Hussein. Alexander Forster. Alexandre Fortier. Alexandre Fortier. Michel Gamache. Marie Sabel Garrido. Ali Reza Gaffari with distinction. Vincent Giannini with distinction. Joseph Giuliano. Roman Gudiev. Jillian Griffin with distinction. Andrew Hamilton. Andrew Hamilton. <laughs> Angela Hatto. <laughs> Chelsea Hyde Craig. Javier Hoyos with distinction. (laughs) 
Alize Imov. Victoria Jepson with distinction. Stephanie Jeremy. Jeremy Jones. Youssef Kabaj with distinction. Kareem Kadura. <laughs> Trina Sani Kaur. <laughs> Jiri Kortansky. <laughs> Theodora Iwana Kutulis. Lea Lecroix. <laughs> Amélie Lafreniere. <laughs> Nicholas LaMonica with distinction. <laughs> Sophie Ledru with distinction. Robert Lemma. Derek Lee. Connor Ling. Wang Fat Matthew Lui. Mika Mandor. Marwa Mansour. Camila Martin with distinction. Eugene Matveyev. Christina Peggy Mavrogianis. Dion McAlpine. Nelson Melgar. Andrea Meyer. Matthew John D. Michelli. Sandra Mirola. Don Melissa Montour. Cindy Moskova. Mathieu Motillon. Xavier Murphy. Xavier Murphy. Fanta Navi. Gabriela Navriete Rolls. Frehiwat Negash. Umwali Nungamye. Emil Tamag. Carla Paquin with distinction.
Rebecca Paris. Sugnesh Patel. Jennifer Pepler with distinction. Gabriel Pogoda. Alicia Porter. Kayla Robertson. Rafael Romero. Christina Rochu. Paige Serentitis. Mark Sarhan. Alicia Saraco. Stefan Senderak. Jumala Senuini. Kason Sharp with distinction, winner of the Rene Voletet Prize for political awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in political science. Samuel Smeaton Morahan. Sarah Smith with distinction. Lina Stinziani. Zane Tarane. Adam Tassoni. Tet Tet Tun. Jacintan Umagantan. Javier Valbuena with distinction. Julia Sofia Vera Araujo with distinction. Felipe Vilviescas. Felipe Vilviescas with distinction. Shauna Winterfeld. Emily Woods. Akosa Quinchwewe Yavoa. Daniel Zach. Daniel Zach. Roxolana Zakirova with distinction. Thomas Zilak with distinction. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor in Baccalaureate in Arts from the following departments. Religion, School of Canadian Irish Studies, School of Community and Public Affairs, Sociology and Anthropology, Theological Studies. Ji Zhu Kim. Jillian Lalonde. Maisa Mirawed with distinction. Mm -hmm. 
Zainab Qureshi. Amanda Raphael. Lucas Ruers Kuziak. Danielle Santiago Sainz with great distinction. Winner of the Boyd Seniard Prize for Religion awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in religion. Savannah Talbot Kelly. Brady Winrob with distinction. Georgia Berthelet. Lauren Maloney. Katrina Swift. Annie Eileen Chevalier with distinction. Laura Gaetan with distinction. Zue Ping Ma with distinction, winner of the Vince Sirwa Prize awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in the School of Community and Public Affairs. Siraj Al Rashwani. Danielle Miriam Ansede. Andrea Antonacci. Lillian Azrak. Melissa Babai. Tara Bast. Stephanie Beaulieu. Brittany Bakobza. Camille Brackett. Rebecca Buisson. Sarah K. Carrado. Michael Ciccato. Tecla Chesta. Agat Chan. Jennifer Chandik. Trisha Chanyuten. Natalia Chaparro. Fadi Sheri with distinction. Adriana Cicerone. De Carla Clark. Wesley Clark. Alessia Clemente. Jenna Coculo with distinction. Alessandra Kunzo.
Cecilia Dawes. John Dedus. John Dedus. Christina Delzingaro with distinction. Catherine de Rosby. Wendy Flor Dorlene. Alessandro Drago, with great distinction. Winner of the Everett C. Hughes Medal for Sociology and Anthropology, awarded to the most outstanding student in sociology and anthropology. Tamara Durant. Vijay Duvedi. Vijay Duvedi. Marisam El Khoury. Sergina Estime. Jad Favre with distinction. Melissa Fioco with distinction. Melissa Fontil. Maria Cristina Farino. Joanne May Gavot Cabrildilla. Perwinder Cowergill. Priscilla Gilpin. <laughs> Dustin Gittleman. <laughs> Stephanie Gonet. <laughs> Daniel Gorshev. Catherine Goyette. Christy Gruber. Derek Hassid. Derek Hassid. Rhiannon Horan. Christina Idris. <laughs> Cody Jacobs with distinction. <laughs> Eleanor Johnson. <laughs> Jocelyn Johnson. Dominique Jur. <laughs> Ashley Kassab with distinction. <laughs> Ekaterina Kavathis. <laughs> Robert Kennedy. Rita Khoury. Willis Kleisha with distinction. Tatiana Konak. Carmen Lamet with great distinction.
Fred Langshaw. <laughs> Cindy Lee. Alexandre Lefebvre with distinction. Alex Legault. Ariel Lewis Wiggins. Kang Wai Lui. Lizelle Lee. Sophia Linzarakos. Joshua McElwain. Kevin Mercurio. Stephanie Meza Cigarro. Shaina Michaud Powell. Amanda Mohammed with distinction. Mitra Mohan with distinction. Audrey Morin. Alben Moravsky. Ashley Morgan. Richard Nashman. Sandra O'Connor with great distinction. Eric Paragamian. Alexandra Petrutsis. Pauline Sarah Finkston. Emily Pinto. Kevin Poon. Daniel Rabin with distinction. Shumi Rahman. Kayla Ramundo with distinction. Melina Randisi. Preeti Rao. Shahana Ratna Sabapathy. Chelsea Reynolds. Kimberly Rudner. Danielle Rudnitska Lavoie with distinction. Jennifer Ruptek. Adelina Schmidt with distinction. Jessica Sabag. Melissa Simeone. Nathan Sadok. Tito Tabora Mayrand.
Miriam Telhig. Brianna Thick. Rex Tolentino. Megan Trentine. Gwendolyn Trous. Gift Suma. Marilena Ventrella. <laughs> Paniota Votsumas. <laughs> Lucas Wilhan. <laughs> Tracy Wilkins with distinction. Angelique Wilkinson. <laughs> Joseph Semberga, winner of the Theological Studies Medal awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in Theological Studies. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the undergraduate certificate in the following departments. Classics, Modern Languages and Linguistics, Etudes Francaises, Theological Studies. François de Corval-Milliard. Sandra Zmuda. Roselle Boucher. Dr. Yona Radu defended her PhD dissertation, Mayat Ima Tesinium in Ayu Itchi, Healing and Decolonization in Chisasabi, in September 2015, under the supervision of Dr. Danielle Saleh, School of Community and Public Affairs. Her dissertation examines the development and implementation of culturally sensitive services designed to transform the self-destructive behaviors induced by the trauma of colonization into successful and lasting healing practices of individual empowerment and collective revitalization. Dr. Radu is currently a lecturer at the School of Community and Public Affairs, First Nations Studies Program, and Geography Planning and Environment Department at Concordia University. Congratulations.
I would now like to ask Dr. Danielle Santiago Sanz to give the valedictory address. Thank you. Chancellor Wiener, Chairman Ebert, President and Vice Chancellor Shepard, Dr. Scott, distinguished guests and participants, fellow students, family, and friends. I am both honored and humbled to address you on behalf of the graduating students from the Faculty of Arts and Science at Concordia University. Aujourd'hui marque la fin d'un long voyage que nous, avons, que nous avons tous entrepris avec brio. Je tiens donc à vous féliciter, les nouveaux bacheliers et bachelières, ainsi que nos familles, amis et professeurs. The moment I found out I would be delivering this year's valedictorian address, I experienced a minute or two of joy and excitement, followed by days filled with stress and uncertainty. For the past month, I have been pondering, racking my brain and heart on what I should say to you today. I am, of course, terrified of screwing things up. Could I possibly say something that resonates with graduating students from across the largest faculty at Concordia University, ranging from religion to exercise science and from Etude Francaise to the School of Community and Public Affairs? This is not an easy task, especially knowing that this can easily be recorded and uploaded to YouTube within seconds <laughs> and thus immortalize in my full awkward glory. So I ask for help. I asked my uh, friends and colleagues what kind of message could be relevant to our graduating class. The first suggestion that came up was the fact that we survived. We worked very hard and we spent uh, quite a few nights without sleep. This is not a small accomplishment since most of us managed to balance school, paid work, extracurricular activities, and activism. This is all the more impressive considering the number of academic and social events that we witnessed throughout the year. Uh, the great deal of student activism and involvement in social justice and the quality of research in the form of academic journals and conferences, as well as the amount of volunteer hours that students put into their respective student associations. So when I reflect on how we survive, the one thing that comes to mind is passion. In my years at Concordia, I'd witness, I witnessed the work of students who were deeply passionate not only about academics, but also social, social justice, success, and student life all of which were quite truly inspiring. This, I think, demonstrates that our generation is not plagued by lazy, narcissistic, entitled selfie takers, as some stereotypes would have us believe. Granted, we do take pretty great selfies, but we're also a passionate, driven, civic-minded generation. Knowing the highly competitive nature of the job market, we've spent the past couple of years making ourselves highly competent and attractive to potential employers and graduate schools. We have worked hard for what we want, we have worked hard for what we achieved today, and I am sure we will continue to do so after today. Another colleague of mine suggested I mention how our degrees have prepared us for real life. Trust me, as a student of religion, I have often wondered the same thing. But I realize that the premise of the question is flawed. The separation between university life and real life is quite artificial. In the past few years, we have faced real life struggles. We have come to understand the meaning of sacrifice and the importance of setting goals. We have, under, we have voiced our discontent with the status quo and we have taken action. Although education in the humanities and social sciences and sciences, for those in exercise science, um, is valuable in and of itself, our analytical, critical, and knowledge-building skills, our sensitivity to the human condition, as well as our ability to manage time and complete projects successfully, can help us counteract the effects of mass education and help us in our future career, regardless of where our paths will lead us after today. With this in mind, I am confident that our education in the arts is highly relevant to real life, so we should not despair when our education is put into question. Sur une note personnelle, en 2007, mes parents et moi avons quitté la Colombie, un merveilleux pays qui était malheureusement ravagé par la guerre et la violence reliée au trafic de drogue. Ayant tout laissé derrière nous, une des plus grandes consolations était l'opportunité de bâtir un meilleur futur et le privilège d'acquérir une formation universitaire. Given the obstacles and challenges brought about by cultural differences and language barriers, I could not at that point imagine graduating from a high caliber institution like Concordia University, no less addressing all of you today. 
Concordia has played a foundational role in my intellectual development, um, providing me with an insatiable thirst for knowledge and a desire to critically engage with history and culture, as well as opportunities and challenges that have led me to where I am today. As such, I owe a big thank you to Concordia, its staff members, administrators, professors, and fellow students for making the past few years a truly rewarding experience. Perhaps what I'm most thankful for is what Concordia taught me in regards to gender relations. Thanks to the work done by dedicated students, professors, the Sexual, Sexual Assault Resource Center and the Center for Gender Advocacy, I have learned to understand my privilege in everyday life and to position my research accordingly. The work done by these amazing people can be seen in the recent creation of a comprehensive, intersectionally feminist, survivor-focused sexual assault policy for the university, an important step towards gender equality and safety in our university and community. This is an occasion worthy of celebration, but also a reminder to all of us to improve in this area by checking our privilege and creating spaces to support those who need it. Before concluding, I think it's important to thank those who helped us make today possible. On behalf of the graduating class, I would like to thank our friends, families, and mentors, and I invite my fellow students to join me in a brief round of applause to thank them. <laughs> to conclude, Let's not forget this, the struggles and sorrows from years past, and we should remember that life will most likely slap us even harder in the future. When, hap what, when that happens, remember that, at least according to Albus Dumbledore, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. With this, I bid you farewell, I congratulate you all, and I wish you good luck. Muchas gracias. Mr. Sens, I'd like to thank you for your remarks. I think passion is indeed the secret sauce for success in life. And I think with that passion, we can all go forward into the light. Before I ask the interim provost to give his closing remarks, I would just like to wish you well, all of you, great success. May you grow from strength to strength and may the force be with you. <laughs> I would like to ask Vice President and Interim Provost Carr for his closing remarks. Thank you. Mesdames, Messieurs, merci d'être venus en si grand nombre de partager avec nous la joie de nos diplômés. Thank you all for being here to celebrate the terrific success of the class of 2016. Dear graduates, I, I know you all want to go party and get on to the next great phase of your lives, but before you do, please just pause for a moment. Hardly anybody gets anywhere in life on their own. We all need mentors, partners, collaborators. We need inspiration, support, love. And sometimes we need a hard reality check, and other times we just need some luck. So before you walk out of this hall today and into that next great phase of your life, can I just ask you to think about the people who've helped you on your journey to this moment here? Some of them may be faculty members or staff sitting up here on stage behind or beside me, or back on our campuses in labs and studios doing the great work they always do. Some of them may be your friends and fellow students sitting in the seats or the rows beside you. But there's another group we should think about and thank, isn't there? Graduates, would you please stand up 
turn around, face the back of this beautiful room, or look into the cameras that face us far away and thank all of the family members and friends who stood with you, who stood by you on your journey. To you, okay, you can turn around now, the other way, <laughs> except for the PhD students in the back row. To you, the graduates of 2016, I offer one last message. Concordia is a great university with the promise of an even greater future ahead of it. And on this day, there is no better measure of our success or our potential than you. We will always be your university, and you will always be our best ambassadors. Thank you for having chosen Concordia as the pathway to your future. You honored us with your choice. And now, as this ceremony comes to a close, allow us to toast your success with a vin d'honneur in the lobby outside. Merci, félicitations, au revoir, à bientôt. Thank you.